Thank you for taking the time to listen to this message by Pastor Cliff Briscoe. We pray it blesses and encourages you throughout the week. If you'd like to know more about Living Word Church and the ministries associated with it, please visit our website at livingwordshawnee.org. Well, you can turn to Acts chapter 2 just so that you're ready when we, when we get there. Acts chapter 2, and we'll, we'll start at verse 30 or 23. But, you know, I've, I've got down here some, some things, and um, I was going through some of my dad's stuff, and does anybody recognize that? I mean, that is a, I mean, that's a, a swastika from World War II. My dad was, um, he was drafted in 1940, he was in for five years, and um, anyway, he was in France, and they were driving the Germans out of France, and so he was the supply sergeant, and he made sure that the, the, um, the men on the front lines were getting supplies, pretty important job. Um, but anyway, he brought that back, and that, that was in my closet my whole time growing up. I used to put it on my arm thinking, gosh, that guy had a big arm. And then he, he brought this back. It's a, it's a bayonet. goes on the end of a, a um, gun. That's for hand-to-hand -hand combat. These are all German. These are not American. And then, um, and then I've got this shotgun. This is a German shotgun. You don't have to worry about it being loaded. There hasn't been bullets made for it in probably 40 years. But um, actually, we did used to shoot it every New Year's Eve <laughs> at our house. But uh, anyway, it's a German shotgun, and so that's what those are. But that doesn't tell the whole story, does it? I mean, I can tell you that's what this is, and that's what that is, and, and so forth. But it doesn't tell the whole story because um, my dad, you know, he's moving through France, and they'd get to certain places where they were, they had, well, they were fighting, and they were dead people. American and German. And so my dad took these. So that tells you a little more of the story. He took these off of, obviously, people that were no longer alive. But, but that doesn't even tell the whole story, really, does it? I mean, somebody, some German young man had that on his arm at one time, and he was the son of somebody and probably the brother of somebody. Uh, the nephew of somebody, as well as these, these other items. And sometimes we, we see things and we look at them and we think that we know the story, but you, I mean, you don't even know the story of my dad, really. He, he was drafted, he was 25 years old when he was drafted. He was living at home because he felt like his parents, who were not very well, needed him. And so he stayed and he got drafted, had to leave them and, um, and so, my dad never talked about anything concerning the war. I mean, I never heard any stories. I don't think that he wanted to tell them. He had lots of friends that were killed. He saw the enemy that was killed. He played a vital part in helping the cause. Um, and at the time that he got out of the service, uh, they were actually, he was being shipped out to Japan. He wasn't coming home. He was going to he was going to Japan. They were going to take the island of Japan when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. And it, that's the only thing that probably kept him from being in. They, they say if we even took the, the island, it would take at least two years and probably longer. So there's, there's a lot to the story. There's, and there's more than that, obviously. I'm just kind of scratching the surface of, of that. I've got letters from my dad that he wrote to my mom. He sure loved that woman that he sent from Germany to her and would tell about some of the things that he saw. And, but what I'm driving at is that we look at something like that and that's not the whole story. And we come to a place like this, we come here to Living Word Church and this is not the whole story. It's, we're a part of the story, but, but 
what, what is this? What, what is this? What this thing that we call the church, this, um, this movement of, uh, of the spirit of God and, and just even what was happening this morning, what, what is this? Where did it come from? What are its roots? What does it mean? And it is vitally important that we don't look at, at just what is and go, well, well, that's that, without really examining what, what is this and where did it come from? What started it? And I'm the kind of person, I always want to go back to the root of it. I want to know why this is here. What, what made this? What, whatever we're seeing right now, we're, we're gathering here in 2018, over 2,000 years later from Jesus, and, and we're gathering here, but do we look like what it is? Because we, we can say that we are, but are we? Are we, do we have an understanding of what this is? What is this? What are we? And if it is this, if, if we discover this morning that this is what this is, are we that? Because just because we say we are doesn't mean that we are. And so I, I wanna help dig in, you know, there's no way that in, in, in the next two and a half hours as I'm preaching, that, <clears throat> It's a joke. Come on, lighten up a little bit. You don't laugh at my jokes. I thought you could at least laugh at that. Um, that, that, that if, if I, there's no way that I can in this short time examine everything that the church is, but I think that I can get down to the root of what is and what they were and ask the question honestly, are we that? Do we look like that? And, you know, part of what's happening in our culture today, I hear this from many in the, the modern church that we have going today. You know, we live in another culture, another time, and so we have to adapt to the culture. And I, I understand that. I'm not going to come in here in a Jesus robe and, you know, with sandals on and the staff and all. I mean, I understand that, that we're not in that culture but yet at the same time, though we may not be the same culture, we have to carry the same spirit. We have to carry and endeavor to push for and to call for and desire what they had, because if we don't have what they had, then we're not what we are supposed to be. We're something else and we can call it culture. We can call it, uh, you know, something uh, about you know, United States of America and who we are as an American, it, that doesn't really matter. The question is, do we operate in any semblance of what they were, even though we live here, do we carry that? Do we have that? In Acts chapter two, I'm, I'm breaking into the story Jesus has come, he's lived miracles, he's died, he's risen from the dead. The day, of, the day of Pentecost has come. It has hit, the power of God has hit the church. And so they're out into the streets now. They're, they're preaching and they're speaking. And in verse 23, this is what Peter says. Him, being Jesus, being delivered by the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by lawless hands and have crucified and put to death. I want you to underline, if you would like, the word lawless. Jesus was perfect. Jesus was the Messiah. He was God in the flesh. And yet lawless, everybody say lawless. Lawless hands took him and killed him. Lawless, what, I mean, what do we mean by lawless? Lawless means without law. It means a, a people that do what they want, when they want, how they want, and it doesn't matter what's written, what's right, what's wrong, they do as they desire. And the, the ironic thing about it is, is that the Jewish people were full of laws. There was all kinds of laws that should have been kept even when Jesus was tried. They tried him at night, it's against Jewish law. You can never try a man in that nighttime, but that's what they did. They didn't have a majority of the leaders there, but they still passed the death sentence without them all being. They broke a lot of their own laws, laws that were supposed to be very important to them. And that's, of course, I mean, you do know this, don't you? That, that people that are in the higher ups, they, they always get to do what they want. 
It doesn't matter. You know, if they got the money, if they got the prestige, if they got the power, laws are just for them something to be broken. It doesn't, it, it doesn't mean anything. It didn't mean anything to them. But let's not get too haughty about it. We probably would have said crucify him too. <laughs> we, I, I think we, we, we would have been shaking fists saying crucify him. Because it's just in our nature really to be rebellious without something happening to us. But here, here we go. So the story is that he has been offered by God. He's been delivered by the predetermined will of God. He's been offered to them and to see what, what are you going to do with him? And so lawless hands took him and they killed him. The, the only perfect man that ever lived, we're going to kill him. Then verse 24, whom God raised up, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be held by it. So here's the story. Lawless people, us, killed him. Can't hold him. <laughs> Amen. You can't hold him. You can't keep him in the ground. He's not going to stay there. Lawless hands killed him, but righteousness raised him. Lawless hands put him in the grave, but holiness, son of God, power of God, took him out of the grave, resurrected. It was not possible. It was not possible. It was just not even possible that he should be held by. It, it was even death, even death, even bury. It wasn't possible that it was able to hold him. Wow. This is a great story, isn't it? It's going to get better. <laughs> He's been raised, not possible to hold him. Verse 27, David prophesies and says, you will not leave my soul in hell and you will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. So, so as the story is unfolding, as we're seeing that here we are, what is the story? What is really happening? And what is really happening? Lawless hand kills. Lawless hands can't keep him dead. He's got to rise. But what is the ramifications of it? You're not going to hell. I know there's people that don't believe in it anymore, but <laughs> hell may be out of fashion, but it's not out of business, right? It's not out of business. It's still working. It's still going. It's still doing. There's still people going there. It doesn't matter what Americans think and how we rewrite and do theological mumbo jump. It doesn't matter. And God's not moved by, moved by it. God's not up there. Oh, golly, Cliff Briscoe believes this. I guess I better change my theology. It doesn't matter. It doesn't move God. But here's the good news is that we have been released from the punishment. We've been released from that. That's, the, that's part of the good story. That's what's behind the scene. As, as you look at this, there's something so much deeper that we have been delivered from hell and the Holy One will not see corruption. And then in verse 28 of the same chapter, the next verse, he says, and you've made known to me the, the ways of life. You've made me full of joy in your presence. You know, <laughs> I, wait, is Brother Dave still here? I think he had to go to work. Oh, I mean, we could have just had Dave keep going, couldn't we? Just, why don't you just keep doing that? Because th th that is what this is about too. When he's up here exhibiting the joy of the Lord that's just so effervescently flowing out of him without even trying, it's just there, it's just flowing out. But you see, that's what happens. That's part of what this is. It's, it makes happy people. I'm gonna take a picture of your face. I say, it makes happy people you look at me. Yes, yes. Very, very happy people. This, I believe that. It's about happy people. Mm -hmm. It makes, there's joy. There's jo the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and so, I mean, what are we, what, are, what is happening here? This guy, Peter, I mean, he's preaching in, in about 10 seconds. He's got ten, four of the most powerful points. You killed him, lawless hands, couldn't keep him dead. He rose from the dead. He delivered you and me from hell. And by the way, the joy is in his presence. And this we have to understand is that Christianity is not about a theology. It isn't that we go around saying, well, let's see now. I mean, theologians, they love long, to, you know, grow long beards and go, hmm, you know, stroke their beard, hmm and talk about theological issues in the Bible. As if now, these guys that are writing the Bible, do you really think they're in a dusty, you know, 
motel, you know, a motel somewhere, and I think I'll write the Bible today. Most of them are running for their lives, but at the same time, they're full of God, full of joy, full. I mean, how, can you imagine who, who these guys are? They have been living with Jesus, walking with Jesus, talking with Jesus, watching the miracles. They watch him die. They watch him raise from the dead. Do you think these guys are not excited? And then they walk around, he walks around for 40 days preaching to them the kingdom of God, and then 10 days after he leaves, they get full of the Holy Ghost and go out and have revival and the first day 3,000 people come into the kingdom. Do you really think these are boring guys? These guys are so ecstatic and so beside themselves they, can, they cannot contain it. And that's what's happening to Peter. He can't contain it. It just flows out of him. We're delivered from hell. The joy is in his presence. Has anybody got joy in here? Well, if you, <laughs> if you don't, then you don't have his presence. Because it's a nice thing. It's a good thing. Yeah. So here we are. There's joy in his presence. In verse 33, Peter continues to preach. He says he's exalted at the right hand of God. Boy, there's all kinds of great theology just pouring out of this guy. He's exalted at the right hand of God. And having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this which you now see and hear. When the Holy Spirit came, there was something to see and there was something to hear. This idea that the Holy Spirit comes and, he's, and I, he can be quiet. He can be, you know, hmm. But I'm telling you on the day, it wasn't what happened on the day of Pentecost. It was so powerful that you could see something. What did they see? They saw 120 people that could not stand up because they accused them of being drunk. I'm, so I'm assuming they were probably a little bit wobbly, you know, you know, trying to stand up, trying to, to, and so these guys are drunk. And so they saw something, but they heard something. They heard them speaking in their languages, the, the, uh, the, the praise of almighty God. Some people say, well, I believe tongues is of the devil. Well, you need to read your Bible because it says when they heard it on the very first day, they said they, they heard people worshiping and praising and giving thanks to God. Now stay with me here. I know we can't get into the streets of Jerusalem and we can't get in the upper room. But ladies and gentlemen, we are a people that should be mirroring, mirroring this, <laughs> reflecting this, how about that? We, we should be people that mirror this in our generation, in our time, that we are a people that are empowered by the Holy Spirit and I believe when you get empowered by the Holy Spirit, it is power. It's not just tongue speaking, but it's power. And you will speak in tongues. You can't hold in. If you've got the power of the Holy Spirit in, you're not going to be able to hold that in. And if you can hold it in, then you don't, you don't have yet what I'm talking about. This is a work of power in your heart and in your life. Are you still out there? Don't shout me down because I'm preaching really, really good. Therefore, it, being exalted... By the right hand of God, having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this. He has poured out this. Now, if he poured out this, why is this not supposed to be for today? I mean, what is this written for if it's not for us to emulate and and, and at least go after it, go after whatever he's got. I want that. If this is that, then I want this. And that's what, you know, Peter said they, when they said, you know, you're, you guys are drunk. He said, no, we're not drunk like you think. This is that that was spoken by the prophet Joel. Then in the latter times, he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters will prophesy. The old men will dream dreams. <laughs> Young men will see visions. You're still out there. And so this, this is what this is. What is this? It is a people that believe that even though we wickedly rejected Jesus, that he died and he rose and he's given the Holy Spirit. And we want whatever, whatever sacrifice you made for us, I am not going to shortchange that. I'm not going to change it later on and say, oh, no, we don't do that anymore. Why? 
I know you don't do it anymore. I, I understand that. I know healing doesn't happen. The big question is why? Now, you know, I believe healing happens. But there's places healing doesn't happen, and we have to realize there's a reason for that. There's a reason why the Holy Spirit doesn't fall in power. There's a reason for that. And it's not here. It's not what's not described here like, like you, we did it, but not anymore. <laughs> I grew up in a church. They could explain away more good stuff in the Bible. All the good stuff, they take that out. And Are you all, do I need to tell another joke? You know, I'm, I'm looking for some joy out there in this house. I'm... He's poured out this, which you now see and hear. Look at verse 36. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. This is who he is. This is, this is, this is who we serve. He is the Lord and he is the Christ. And he's poured out this, which you now see and hear. He's given this. He's both Lord and Christ. And if he's Lord, then he gets to do what he wants to do. He gets to, if he wants to pour out the spirit, he gets to do that. Why? He's Lord. And how can he do it? Because he's the Christ. He's the anointed one. He's got plenty of it. He's not going to run out of it. You know, in 2019, he's not going to say, King's X, you know, I've just run out, all the, uh, run out of all the anointing that we have. He's not, not going to do that, is he? <laughs> he can not only make more, he is it. He is it. So, he's, so he, he is both Lord and Christ. So this is really in essence who we are. This, this defines the inception of the church. And so if this is who we are, then whatever we are doing flows out from that. We don't get to come back later on and say, you know, this Holy Spirit stuff is a little messy. And it is, isn't it? It, it can get a little messy. And, you know, when you're a pastor, sometimes you just kind of wouldn't just like not to have so messy. But if, if you want this, if you want to help people really get the stuff, you're going to have to allow some mess. You've you, you got to allow stuff to happen. And so here they are. This is who they are. This is who we are. This is what's working. And so they ask the question, what do we do? So now I'm, now, I'm to point number two, the second point out of 12. No, there's just three points. Here's number two. The second point is now what? If, if this is who we are, if this is what's flowing out, there's people now saying, what do we do? I would I wish, I wish that we had enough power and glory going on that the world would be saying, what do we need to do? Rather than us trying to coax people in and try and talk them in. If, if, and I'm not shaming us. I'm just saying, if, if this is who we are and this is who we should be, then this is the kind of questions that should be happening and being asked of what do I need to do? I, I see something happening here. You say, but this is the day of Pentecost. That's different. Why do we have to say that it's different? Why do, why do we want to excuse ourselves? Rather than excusing ourselves, why don't we just let it challenge us? Can we not just let that come to us and say, okay, and God's not mad at you. He's not up there going, you're a bunch of bums. He's not, that's not what he's doing. He's not mad at you, but he is saying, here it is. Do you want this? Will you reach for this? Will you go for this? And so that's what they asked. They said, what do we need to do? And the response is in verse 38. Peter says to them, repent. And that's a whole nother sermon in itself. But repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And, and of course, uh, their, their main repentance is they're going to have to change their mind about Jesus. You know, who, who they, 
think he is. And that's the first thing that you and I have to do. We have to change our mind about who Jesus is. And, and may I insert here, he's not the Jesus that a lot of Americans make him. They just make him savior. He's just the guy that you call on to get to go to heaven. And, and, and that's all. Really, what the call is, Jesus didn't say go into all the world and tell them to pray the sinner's prayer. He said go into all the world and make disciples of every nation. Make disciples. A disciple is a follower, not a prayer, one-timer prayer, but a follower of Jesus. And so this is, you know, this kind of sticks in my crawl. I think our message is wrong. I think we need to be telling people rather than making calls for salvation, we should be making calls for discipleship. Do you want to follow Jesus? Do you want to give your whole life to him? And I think these people, when they said, what must we do? I think they knew that if, if they cross over, if they cross over to these guys, going to be dangerous. They already killed the leader of the movement. <laughs> so what are they going to do with you? But they're saying, what must we do? What, what, what do we do now? And so he says, repent. Every one of you. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Probably baptism then was a much more pointed statement than what we do in America. Because if they get baptized in the name of Jesus, they literally are saying, I'm saying goodbye to family, culture, as I've known it. Um, everything, I'm following him. And it is the thing that puts them front and center. I'm following him. It's a big act. Should be a big act here, but you know, we're... We're in America and everybody gets baptized. <laughs> Whenever I talk to people, are you saved? Yes, I was baptized when I was 10. Oh, okay. So it's like end of conversation. I got baptized when I was seven or whatever. Repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for what? For the remission of sin. For the remission. Your sins are going away. That's what this is about. Your sins are going away and you shut now. But see, they don't ever stop there. That's what we do in America. We say things like your sins are going to go away, but they didn't stop there. They said, be baptized for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what they said. We probably should be telling people when we put them in the water, you know, why don't you just get ready to get baptized in the Holy Ghost too? Let's just do both. Let's do both baptism at the same time. We'll get you baptized in water and get you baptized in the Holy Ghost. And, and I have before baptized people that came out of the water speaking in tongues. I, I had a, a guy, one, one of Melissa's people that she helped get here for the baptism. He told me last week, he was getting in the car, he said, you know, uh, the other night, I was in bed, and he said, I woke up, and I was speaking in tongues. And I mean, he'd never done it. That's, you know, that's, that's well, that's the Holy Spirit really slipped one on him, didn't he? Just, she, <laughs> can't give it to you when you're awake, so I just give it to you when you're sleeping. <laughs> and so, but he says, baptize in water, get your sins gone, receive the Holy Spirit. That's what this is. This is about receiving the Holy Spirit. Ultimately, it is about you and me getting filled with God. It's not about you and I getting a new theology. Let me tell you, this is what I think. This is free. This is my advice. It won't cost you anything. If you want to delete it out of the CD, you can do that. But here we go. I believe that this generation is hungry. Maybe the most hungry generation that doesn't know it yet, but hungry to see something other than talk. Talk, 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 talk. I know, let's talk. Anybody like to talk some more? I know, give them another five part CD theories. Yeah, some of them is theories, but CD series. And we need to be getting people filled with God. That would solve a lot of things in our country. And I, I think and I, I believe that this generation is hungry to see something, see people baptized in power, doing the work of the ministry in power. And by the way, I'm going to just say something else. It's stuck in my crawl. I think that we need to return to the baptism of the Holy Spirit being a baptism of power. 
it isn't about you just speaking in tongues. And we've, we've done this in the charismatic movement. We'll get people, we'll pray for them. It's kind of, just say yabba dabba do. Come on, yabba yabba. Say do, 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 do. Ba, ba. Oh yeah, now, now you got it. Praise God. What we need to be saying, God wants to baptize you in power. I believe you'll speak in tongues, but rather than just trying to get people to say some words, why don't we, why don't we major on you need to receive the power of the baptism of the Spirit. You need to receive His power. And I believe if they receive that power, and again, they're not going to be able to contain that. It's going to come out. Is there anybody here this morning that would say, I am hungry to, be, to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit's power. Is there anybody here like that this morning? Is there anybody here this morning that you would say, I've not received the Holy Spirit's power, but I want it this morning. Anybody like that? Nobody? You've never received, but you want to? You may be, is, is he making the altar call already? Well, kind of, yeah. I'm, I'm ready to pray right now. Are you, you, you want to receive? Is there anybody else? Anybody else? No, I'm, no we're going we're gonna, to, I'm not finished with my, can, can I pray for people to receive the baptism and still finish my message? Is that all right with y'all? I mean, I don't have to finish, but it's going to be good. Are you guys serious? You, you want to, have, you've never received the baptism of power of the Holy Spirit? You have? You have, have you, and you've spoken in other tongues? You have, have you, you've never done that? Well, well, since you raised your hand, why don't you just stand up? Give me some men to stand around them that are full of God, full of God, and we're going to pray right now, and we're going to pray for the power of God. Is there anybody else? I mean, while, while we're doing this, you might as well get in on this. You might as well get in, get in on this. Yeah, go, just go. Come on, just lay hands on them right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, baptize these men in power. Baptize them in power, in the power of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the fire and the power of God. The fire and the power of God. The fire, the power of God. Come in here. Come in here in power in Jesus' name. Come in here in power in Jesus' name. The power of the Holy Spirit. Come now. Come now. Come now. Come now in Jesus' name. Everybody, everybody that prays in the spirit, why don't you just pray right now? Fill, fill right now, Lord. Fill in the name of Jesus. Fill in the name of Jesus. Fill this vessel, Lord. Fill now. Shavadi in the la mama mastiera la bada. Ere le mastiada la beta. Ere le matiada la rabada dieta. Ere le matiada la rabandi esiera la banane. Keep praying, keep praying. Keep going. Are we missing anybody this morning? Maybe you're feeling spurred now or encouraged for you to receive. Just stand up. Stand up right where you are if you're wanting the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, let it happen again. Let it happen all over the world again. Let it happen, Lord, that you will baptize in power, in the power of the Spirit. All over the world, Lord, not just here, all over the world. Do it afresh. Do it again, Lord. 
We want your power. We want your glory. Mm. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name. Shotarana Maka. Esha Shoda Rada Bana Naragana. Esha Bona Maradana Maragana Maradama. Iba Sana Mata. Eda Iba Sada Manana. Eda Ima Sana Mata. Ana Jina Namata. Phil. Fill with your power. Fill with your power. Fill with your power. Fill with your power, Lord. Fill with your power, Jesus. Fill with your power, Jesus. Are the rest of us praying? Let's just lift our hands up in this 
sanctuary right now. Lift your hands. Lord, we thank you that you're doing your work, doing your work, filling, filling, filling with the Holy Spirit, filling with the Holy Spirit in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Praise you, Father. Praise to you, Father. Hallelujah. If you if you are hungry, I don't know if you've spoken in tongues or not, but I promise you, you will. You just keep pursuing God. Keep pursuing him and his power and his glory. It's coming. Pursue him. Pursue him. Pursue him. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, just about one more minute, guys and girls, pray. And then we're going to return for just a moment. All right, let's come back for just a minute. Don, let him go ahead and come back. Sit. Let's come back. Because I think this, it's important that from right here, we're praying to receive the power of God. And I'm assuming if you didn't come, if you didn't respond, then you have this. How many have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit in this room? Quickly. Then if, if, if what I've shared, if, if this is right, if... We have believed in the resurrection. We've believed in the sending of the spirit. If we have been a part of those that said, what must we do? And we have repented and we've come and we've received this power and this glory. What does it mean from here? If, if we're that, if we've come to that moment and we're here, what, what happens from here? Do we just become a people that keep coming and hearing? And I do want to say this, the Bible is very plain that these people continued to gather together. Even after receiving the Holy Spirit, they gathered. God likes the gathering. So there, there is a movement out there saying, you know, church down with the church, you know, we don't need, need church. Well, we need to gather. We, we, there's something that happens to us. There's something that happens to me when I get to stand by Brother Paul and praise. Or I get around Dave or, or whoever it is. You, know, you get around one another and it's an encouragement, isn't it? But the goal is not just to come and gather only. The goal is to gather and. Everybody say gather and. Gather and. Come on, say it one more time. Gather and. gather and. I promise you I'm going to take five minutes. This is going to be quick. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now Peter and John, they went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer in the ninth hour. So they're still gathering. They were still gathering even with the Jewish people. They were still gathering with them to pray. They were being a witness there. So the gathering is important. So here they are. They, they've been gathering. They've been talking. They've been praying together. And here they are. They're going to prayer. And on the way to prayer, something happens. And that's what I would like to say to you from here. If we have received this, then we still gather together. We still pray together. We still hear the word together. We still worship together. But then we're going places. And on the way to going places, there ought to be some things happening. In verse 6, it says, And Peter said unto him, the guy that was crippled, he said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I will give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he takes him by the hand. He pulls him up. The guy stands up. And the Bible says that he jumped up. He started running into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. What, the thing that I see 
that, that we are. I'm not going to say the early church because this is who we are. It's not them and then us. It is us. This is us. Who are we? There's a story, just like there's a story behind this. We gotta dig down to find out what the story is. And the story is that he's risen, he's sent back the spirit. We're worshipers, we're joyful in his presence. We've got something, we still gather together. We're, we're still receiving the Holy Spirit, but then we're going wherever we're going. And it may be that we do it on purpose. It may be a Thursday night that we go out on purpose to go get the, the mind of God to go to Walmart, to go to the park, to go to the, the mall, to go to JC Penney's, to go to OBU. We went to OBU this week and prayed for people there on the campus. It, it may be that we do it on purpose, but in the process of just living, the, in the process of going, they were going somewhere and they passed a guy and I'm not sure they hadn't passed him before, but this time was different. The guy is looking on them, they are looking at him and they're saying, you know what? We don't have any money right now, but we do have something. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And I think that's who we are too. We are a people that gather and we are a people that gather and go. And we are a people that we need to, as a church body, all of us need to become more aware of what is around us and not keep shutting off the possibility. You say, well, I've never seen God do a miracle. If you tried to work one, have you ever been in a place where there was one needed? They're all around us. You can go almost anywhere and there's people. You say, oh, I just couldn't do that. How do you know? How do you know? How do you know? One of the, one of the first really big miracles that I saw, I was actually pastoring and I, this lady had visited the church and you've heard this story before and she, I went to visit her because she'd visited the church and this is like 40 years ago and she had this baby and she said, I have to take him in for surgery. And his feet were, were like this. They were just turned way out like, and they're going to have to do surgery when they're that, that bad. I said, well, can I pray? And so I took his little feet in my hands and I prayed for him and I watched his feet, both of them just go, Phew. just, it was, it, 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 I have to say, it surprised me. I mean, I was expecting, I mean, I'm praying in faith, but right there, wow. And the, and the woman, was, she's standing there to him, look at that, look at that. And I bet you think she became a good church member. Never saw her again. <laughs> I don't understand it. If that had happened to my kid, I would have said, Pastor Briscoe, would you like to have my car? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> incredible and, and of course I, there's people here all can you know melissa showed a video last week a lady coming out of a wheelchair you know it's but do you do you go do you share do you speak do you say and so they're, they're well you know we do have something in the name of and so they get in trouble over it and they're called on the carpet and notice what they say in verse 16 of the same chapter chapter 3 and they tell these guys his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you now see and know yes the faith which comes through him has been given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all you may be thinking I can't do this well you can't do it but the name of Jesus can and this is this is what they did they said they said to him you know when they got in trouble, they said, well, you, know, you can say what you want, but it's in the name of Jesus that this happened. And then later on in verse 12 of chapter four, he says, they say, by the way, there's no other name given in the earth under heaven by which we can be saved. And so this, this thing is, is coming to the, the early church that as they are going and doing and they're finding power in the name of Jesus and they're, they're, just, they're just loving him, just going with him, just gathering together and they're so full of him that when they go out, they, they can't help it. They, they're just people with needs. And this is what I wanna challenge Living Word Church with as we close. If we've got this, if we say that we're a part of this, if we're finding out what this is, what is this called church? Then I think if we believe that we are a part of this, that is called church, then we have to be doing that too. We've got to be a people that are reaching out, telling others, look, there's a Jesus that's alive. 
He's alive and he can meet needs. We can pray, we can believe, he can touch, he can minister, he can heal, he can raise, he can set free, he can do this and I can speak in the name of Jesus. It's not my power. If there is a power though that has been unleashed in that name, silver and gold I do not have sometimes, but such as I have give I you in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Will you receive that call? I'm praying that for this whole church body. That because there's something stirring in our in our body for this. That God is stirring us once again. Okay, we've had a season of whatever the season is. All the seasons are good if they're God seasons. They're all good. But there there's a stirring in this body to say, look, let's let's take it out. Let's share. And nobody's under pressure. We're not going to have you come in next week. How many people did you get healed this week? We're just saying, would you, would you be this? If we say we're a new, I hear people talk, oh, we're a New Testament church. I don't think it's that difficult to be a New Testament church. It's believing, receiving salvation, receiving forgiveness, rece understanding you need to repent about Jesus. It's receiving the Holy Spirit. Go do the stuff that he said to do. I think that's New Testament. Is that you? Let's stand. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this message by Pastor Cliff Briscoe. We pray it blesses and encourages you throughout the week. If you'd like to know more about Living Word Church and the ministries associated with it, please visit our website at livingwordshawnee.org.